Surging inflation is hitting consumers everywhere and the World Bank warns most governments can do nothing to stop it. It says food prices are up by nearly 40% since the beginning of Russia's attack on Ukraine and energy costs are likely to remain high for months to come. The collective price hike is also taking a toll on consumer spending and the growth of businesses worldwide. As a consequence, the World Bank expects global growth to slow down from its previous estimate of 4.1% to 3.2%. It's also warning of a looming food crisis. The fertilizer and energy are critical for the crop cycle, so they're building on each other and creating a uh, food insecurity crisis that, that uh, will last at least months and uh, probably uh, into next year. Meanwhile, the International Monetary Fund also expects the crisis in Ukraine to severely set back the world economy. It's slashing its global growth forecast to 3.6% from 4.4% for this year. It expects inflation to continue surging across most economies through next year. And it says emerging economies may face a sovereign debt crisis, which is expected to be at least as severe as the debt shock of 2008. It's calling on policymakers to implement a number of measures to blunt the impact of rising consumer prices and unemployment on the most vulnerable populations. End the war in Ukraine. Second, continue to confront the pandemic with a comprehensive toolkit that includes vaccines, testing and antiviral treatments deployed everywhere. Third, tackle inflation and debt. Central banks should act decisively and communicate clearly. Spending must be carefully prioritized and targeted. Some countries will require that restructuring. Let's go to economist Vicky Price now, who's a board member of the Centre for Economics and Business Research. She joins us now from London. Good to have you back with us, Vicky. After many years of stubbornly low inflation, much of the world is now seeing record high inflation. Now, initially, supply couldn't keep up with surging demand as economies were reopening from those global pandemic lockdowns. But what do you think is the major contributor to inflation right now? Well, more recently, of course, is the war in the Ukraine. There is no doubt about that. I mean, we do know that Russia and the Ukraine together are major exporters of wheat, for example, and fertilizers. I was mentioned uh, just uh, a second ago. Um, those, of course, are very important, both for the farming community, but also, of course, for consumers, uh, particularly the poorer part of the world that spend an awful lot of their money or the greatest proportion of their money on energy and food. And if that is the case, uh, you know, in terms of the increasing prices, um, actually constraining the amount that is available for people to spend, then we're having exactly this type of crisis which the World Bank is worried about. And what they have done, of course, yes, we just heard uh, the IMF talking about um, various countries needing to deal with their fiscal and monetary side. Yes, that's fine for the richer countries. They can do something about it. But for the poorer countries, it's not very easy. And the World Bank has announced um, this $170 billion um, crisis response fund for poorer countries just now during the, the spring meetings that they've been having in Washington. Well, that is quite similar to what they had set up for the COVID crisis. So it does show the extent to which we have gone back a little bit, really, to being in crisis mode again. Um, very, very similar for some countries, in fact, if not worse for some, than what we saw during COVID. And understandably, workers around the world are demanding higher wages in order to keep up with the rising cost of living. But there is a risk of a negative feedback loop with wages, isn't there? Because as uh, uh, companies do, uh, I guess, uh, give in to those demands for more wages, uh, inflation and prices are also under pressure. So effectively, uh, inflation is worse if workers are, are paid more. So what do businesses and indeed governments, what should they be be doing now in response to this uh, higher cost of living? 
But what's happening in some of the more developed economies is that indeed wages are rising and are rising reasonably fast, but not as fast as prices. So there's still a, a squeeze on real living standards, which is an issue. It's both the case in the US, it's the case in the UK, but it's even more the case, interestingly enough, in Europe, where wages are just not picking up to the extent that you might have thought they would be doing by now. The result, of course, is that whereas in places like the US and the UK, interest rates are going up because there is a lot more concern about inflation having exactly the impact you've been describing if you have higher wages and you have higher inflation. In Europe, they're not moving to raise interest rates yet because they're seeing that, in fact, wages are really lagging behind. And in terms of businesses and what they can do, they have all this extra energy costs. They have now also increasing, even though perhaps not as sharply, wage costs too. There are many pockets, many sectors which are finding themselves unable to find enough people anyway, such as in the area of um, hospitality and tourism, which is beginning now to grow quite strongly. And the result, of course, is, you know, what do they do? Uh, what they're doing is they're raising prices up to a point. But if the consumer cannot, in fact, meet that uh, sort of increased price, then they are in trouble. So profits are likely to be squeezed in many areas, and many companies are resisting actually giving the types of increases that their workers need in order to survive. Hence why we're having this crisis in terms of living wage and, uh, and the ability for various consumers to spend. And that is also why the International Monetary Fund and its forecast has now lowered its growth expectations, and it has lowered them, unfortunately, particularly for the emerging world. Okay, Vicky Price, uh, always a pleasure and really good to get your analysis. Thank you again for that.